Peace everybody, Carol here, and um, today I would like to give a little teaser. I'm preparing a longer video that's more in depth about the advantages of certain foods on our brain, and in particular for the autistic and Asperger brain, I think we need a increased awareness of knowledge of the effect that foods have on our psyche and also our biology and um, how we feel, our mood and everything. And I've been following um, several prominent YouTubers. One of them is Dr. Rhonda Patrick, who has taken it upon herself to make a mission of spreading the gospel about broccoli sprouts. Now, um, what is so special about broccoli sprouts? I want you to know that there is a compound in the uh, planet Earth called sulforaphane. And sulforaphane is a very short-lived molecule that is the most potent molecule that activates a certain pathway in our body called the NRF2 pathway. And the NRF2 pathway activates like 200 body, bodily reactions. And people that eat the food that's reported to be the highest in sulforaphane is broccoli sprouts. Broccoli sprouts has the highest level. Now, the pills that they make First of all, the only pill that has sulforaphane in it is in France. It's not available in the United States or Canada, and that's where I live, half between the United States and Canada. And um, it turns out that everybody that does the research ends up basically taking broccoli sprouts because they study everything and they find out what the pills are and they think cost-wise, benefit-wise, uh, you know, how, how, what does it taste like, whatever, and that's what everyone seems to be going for. So. Um, I have some notes here, and I want to tell you some research that's been done specifically for autistic people. Sulforaphane um, helps autism. They had these, uh, I believe it was three batteries of tests that the mothers uh, or the caretakers of the young men that were in this study, there were 44 young men, young subjects. Um, I don't know the ages, but it just the guy that was reporting the data said young boys and men. So I'm guessing it's like maybe between 10 and 18 and so the mothers would uh, assess the behavior and taking as little as say one big handful of broccoli sprouts per day uh, not sure if they actually took the sprouts or if they took a pill that was specifically made anyway uh, here's what it did more eye contact less repetitive motion more social and other markers. So there was like each battery of tests um, taught, you know, maybe had 50 questions. And so then they would get a summary and they would find out, wow, okay, so here's the bottom line. When autistics took sulforaphane versus a control, the ones on the sulforaphane had statistically significant and clinically meaningful improvements in irritability, lethargy, stereotypy behavior, hyperactivity, and like I said, more eye contact, less repetitive motion, uh, better social interactions, and um, and this was a 37% improvement. So roughly, you know, that's clinically meaningful. So that tells me that if I start taking it pretty much within a day or two, my need to stem you know, or my, my nervousness when I'm out in public, you know, social, going, getting groceries or whatever, just that constant fear of, oh, am I going to say the right thing to this person or, you know, accidentally bump into someone, am I going to overreact or am I going to be like normal? You know, all that stuff that we Aspies or half Aspies or autistics think about on a daily basis, those things will stress us out less. We'll feel more love. We'll feel more sociable. We'll feel um, just... It basically, it seems to take away all the negative uh, symptoms, but it doesn't take away the good symptoms. Like you're still going to be creative, you're still going to be, you know, passionate about your projects that you're working on, and uh, still have energy. In fact, you'll have a lot more energy. You'll feel better. Um, people that are neurotypical have reported that when they take their broccoli sprouts, they feel better. They feel more energetic. Um, I don't know, lucid. Uh, they sleep better. So. This sulforaphane, um, let's talk about it. I'll, I'm just going to read some of my basic notes, which is this this information is what excites me and what's going to make me do more research and put together a more thorough talk with slides. So, um, 
let, let me talk about what is sulforaphane. Well, I drew a little picture. Can you see this little circle with a cell? That's a cell in the plant. And what happens is something called glucoraphanin, the little, the little green circles, are inside the cell of the plant and it's filled with, okay, so these are vacuoles and they're filled with glucoraphanin. And that is a precursor to the sulforaphane. But in order for it to be active, it has to be activated by something called myrosinate. And there's a certain class of plants that have the vacuoles filled with glucoraphanin, and then outside the vacuoles is the uh, myrosinate, which is the catalyst that when you chew the food, or like say when an insect starts to eat the plant, the myrosinate and the glucoraphanate come in contact with each other because the vacuoles are burst or broken open. And that causes them to react together and form the sulforaphane, which is a bitter compound that tells these bugs, don't eat that plant again. So it's a protective mechanism. And so when you eat broccoli sprouts or basically any cruciferous vegetables, like especially raw broccoli has the sulforaphane in it. Uh, sorry, I'm going to take it back. Raw broccoli has the precursors in it. And the act of chewing the raw broccoli will cause the uh, glucoraphanin to react with the myrosinate because you break the vacuoles and cause them to have uh, contact with each other. So good to chew your food well. <laughs> and then you uh, swallow it and then the sulforaphane is formed in your mouth and as, you, as it goes into your stomach. And then that sulforaphane, as I said before, activates the 200 plus um, biochemical reactions in your body that are based on the NRF2 um, the NRF2 pathway. So uh, we're gonna I'll just go through my notes in, in the order that I took them. Um, sulforaphane is um, it's an anti-inflammatory it delays aging it's a detox material um, it controls over 200 genes. I said 200 pathways, but I meant 200 actual genes. So when you activate a gene, it means that gene is going to now start producing a certain protein that you need in your body. Okay, so those proteins are all good ones that the NRF2 pathway makes. They're proteins that cause you to lessen your inflammation. And um, I know that there's a lot of papers out there that link autism to inflammation. And I don't mean the good traits of autism, like the passionate artistic abilities or, you know, uh, ability to be an empath or, you know, play musical instruments or things like that or be a great scientist, um, like Einstein and Tesla and those kind of people. It doesn't uh, hurt that in any way. If anything, it would help that. But it takes away the negative anxiety kind of things or the things that um, maybe make you not um, understand what other people are saying because you're in your own mind so much. I, I don't know. I'm just, these are my own personal guesses um, as to why it helps. And inflammation is, is a link to almost all diseases, if not all. And it also can help, uh, I mean, can make, inflammation can help autistics not feel as good. And, um, also, it can make other regular and neurotypical people, you know, the conventional people also not feel good. But especially for autistics and um, Asperger's, we, we would like to feel good because we have a lot of challenges in terms of trying to feel good in such a toxic society. And we can't snap our fingers and make Walmart fluorescent lights go away, but we can eat sulforaphane and be less reactive to maybe the... Um, the fluorescence and the flickering of our computers, etc. Um, you will notice that I do go off in tangents, and uh, so bear with me. But um, as I said, sulforaphanes uh, are a class of chemicals called isothiocyanates. Isothiocyanates, and these are highest in raw broccoli sprouts. When you crush it, it releases the myrosinase, which is like the catalyst that causes the uh, glucoraphanin to turn into sulforaphane. And cooked broccoli has no myrosinase. So just as a little um, tip, when you eat any cooked broccoli, cooked cauliflower, cooked Brussels sprouts, cooked bok choy, these are all high in um, the compounds, um, you should add a little bit of 
freshly ground mustard seed. So this is on my shopping list. I will be starting to make my own mustard with this freshly ground mustard seed. Ground it into a fresh powder and then I'm going to be making mine into mustard or maybe a salad dressing. But some people just sprinkle the ground mustard seed on their broccoli. And I'll have to experiment with that and I'll get back to you about ways to make it taste good. Um, the Let's see. Some people have this certain bifidobacterium in their gut, a certain bacteria, the good bacteria, that helps the um, leucoraphanin uh, react into sulforaphane because this bifidobacterium makes the morosinase. And, um, but oh, this typically only works, only converts about 10% of it. So even if you don't add the uh, mustard powder, you'll still get some benefit most likely, unless you just don't have any of that bifidobacterium in there. I don't know which one it is. There's several, but um, you know, some people, especially autistics and uh, Asperger's, might have gut issues and they might not have the proper bacteria in their stomach. So it's best not to rely on that and just to take the mustard seed if you're gonna have cooked broccoli. Now, raw broccoli doesn't require the morosinase because, you know, the morosinase from the um, mustard seed because it's in the broccoli. It's just destroyed when you cook it. And that's why the sprouting the seeds um, uh, provides the morosinase because it is still raw. Now, um, with an asterisk that, um, okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about if you pour certain temperature of water over the sprouts, you actually activate it even more. But you're it's you're not getting it hot enough to cook it. It's not like cooking it. It's just flash heating it at a certain temperature, and I'll talk about that uh, last. So um, after a traumatic brain injury, sulforaphane decreases the brain sw swelling by 50%, and that was an animal study. Um, 40 milligrams of sulforaphane per day is a common amount used in testing and rec as a recommended dose. It helps for benzene to leave the body, and did you know that uh, people that smoke cigarettes have are constantly bombarding their body with benzene through the lungs because that comes out of a cigarette, and it's also in the air we breathe if you live in a toxic city with pollution. So, um, you know, the sulforaphane would help your body get rid of it because if it helps 60% of it to leave in one day, then that's a, that's a pretty good a detox rate, I would think. Um, I think I don't know what the numbers are for if you don't take sulforaphane, what's the baseline? She didn't say that, and I'll have to look into that. But I, I, I'm guessing it probably at least doubles the amount that leaves the body per day of benzene. It improves the brain swelling 50%. I mentioned that. Um, if you have uh, prostate cancer, um, there's a marker they measure. I think it's called the PSA. And it has the, uh, and by, by measuring that marker, they've shown, they've shown that sulforaphane halves the growth rate of prostate cancer. So that's amazing. It more than halves it. It reduces the growth rate of the cancer by 86%. And that's amazing because prostate cancer is pretty slow growing anyway. And so if you can slow it down at 86%, you know, that's like really going to be great because then it might pretty much not matter that you have prostate cancer because you just keep taking sulforaphane. Well, I mean, it matters, but, um, it, you know, makes me want to take it anyway. Um, even though I'm a woman. <laughs> okay. Um, it, it reduces the autistic and the schizophrenic symptoms 34%. So they did testing on autistics and then they got such good results with such a small 44 person study that they repeated the test on schizophrenics and 34% uh, and of uh, symptoms were reduced for the schizophrenics. I think it was 37 for the autistics. Uh, these are approximate numbers. And then people that have diabetes, when they have their diabetic blood work done, it improves all the markers across the board. So they're able to handle sugar better, um, their LDLs are better, and their, all their heart, er, everything that they measured for the diabetes were significantly improved. Um, as an antidepressant, now get this, it's equal to Prozac. So uh, this might be for rats. That might be a test they did for rats, but as you might know, or mice, whatever, it's mice or rats. Anyway, either, whatever they do the testing on, I think it's mice. Um, mice are very, very similar to humans in many astounding ways, and so that's why they make such good test subjects. 
Um, not that I agree with testing on animals, but they're doing it, and so I'm not going to ignore the data um, while it's there. So raw kale, raw broccoli in uh, smoothies is a really good way to get it, and you don't even need to add the mustard powder because you know it's it's raw, so you still have the morosinase in there. Moving on, um, I'm going to talk about how to make broccoli sprouts, although there's really good videos all over the internet. You just type in YouTube, how to make broccoli sprouts, and, and you'll see how. Um, let's see. I'll just go ahead and tell you now. Take a tablespoon or two tablespoons of broccoli seeds, sprouting seeds, put them in a tall one quart mason jar and rinse them out, drain them, and then fill it half full with water and soak them in the dark overnight. Then the next day, not over 12 hours later, but 10 or 12 hours later, drain them completely, rinse and drain, and then store them upside down for the next three or four days. And twice a day, you'll be taking them out, rinsing them out, and draining them twice a day. That's to keep the mold out and to keep them moist. And uh, some people store them in just regular light, but other people store them in the darkness, and I don't know what's better. Um, I assume the darkness gives more potency. Um, I want to say that you have to have a special kind of lid. You know how canning jars, there's a little ring and then there's a little circular metal piece? Well, you replace that circular metal piece with some kind of non-absorbent netting. Like I used, um, I had a little school bag with a zipper and it had a little piece of netting um, in one of the zippers that was like polyethylene probably. And uh, I don't recommend you do this because it might have been some toxic lead filled stuff, but I'm just using it once until I can buy the right kind of stainless steel screen. But I tested it and the broccoli seeds don't go through it, so it, the holes are small enough. And I cut a little circle out and I put it on my mason jar and then I put that little ring on top and screwed it down tight. And that's my little netting on top. And that's working for me now until I can get a stainless steel one mail order. So uh, let's see here, let me just uh, go through my list. Please forgive me if I'm repeating myself. It's anti-aging. It prevents cancer. It protects against UV skin damage. It improves cholesterol levels. levels. Good ones go up, bad ones go down, that type of thing. It fights ulcers. It kills heliobacter in the gut, by the way, um, without any antibiotic resistance because it's a natural food. It's anti-inflammatory. It helps autistic symptoms, as I said. Uh, it inhibits the inflammatory pathways. It activates the heat shock response. And um, for those of you who may not know what that is, it's, you might have heard of cold therapy. <laughs> There's also heat therapy. And these, going into extreme cold or extreme hot, like dunking your body in a cold lake or into a hot sauna, um, it gives your body, the, the hot, one gives your body what's called a heat shock response and that is like a, a trigger that makes your body think oh no I'm getting hot and so then it builds this this response to it so that next time you get hot it's protecting it's protected you know like it makes your immune cells stronger and whatever it does to make you your help your cells more robust and so that heat shock, heat shock response is a beneficial response and that's why people do so well when they go into hot water or cold or, or sorry hot water or cold water or hot saunas because you get the heat shock response or the cold shock response whatever maybe there's a name for the cold one and it causes you to be more robust of course you don't want to burn yourself to death because that would be but you just you just shock yourself just a little bit and then it makes you more robust and that's kind of what sulforaphane is. It's like a shocking material. Like when the bugs eat it, they see it as a poison, but when we eat it, it's just enough to give us a little shock to make us more robust. And that's the way I look at it, if you allow me to just give my opinion on that. Um, so you can overdose on it, and the only paper I've ever seen where a woman ate three pounds of 
bok choy raw per day. And then because of the extreme overdose of sulforaphane, you know, like who would eat three pounds of raw? But she did and it caused her to get uh, hypothyroidism and um, that's where your thyroid starts not working anymore. So there is, there is a limit to how much you can take. You don't want to take too much, but again, 100 milligrams of the sulforaphane per day seems to be a good dose. And that's like a half a cup to one cup of broccoli sprouts. Um, yeah, a lot of the testing was 40 milligrams per day. Um, also, notice that broccoli sprouts has about 10 times more, I think it's 10 times more, um, sulforaphane than just broccoli itself. And I think that's because, let's just say you have a handful of seeds that have X grams of, uh, of your precursors in there the sulforaphane precursors. Those same precursors don't multiply when they sprout. They're just, they just, those same precursors go into the sprouts. So, but if you chew the seeds, it just apparently doesn't, I don't know, I've never tried it, but people just don't do it because it probably doesn't taste good. And if you grind the seeds, it probably doesn't taste good. So, otherwise people would do that. But if you sprout it, um, <clears throat> it makes, everything more bioavailable because it, in the seed it's like all packed in there tight and even if you grind it I don't know how bioavailable it is but when you sprout it it's very bioavailable and then you could even grow those sprouts into big broccoli and that same number of molecules is still the same it doesn't multiply when the broccoli grows so every time it gets bigger and bigger it it dilutes it that's why broccoli has less than the sprouts so the sooner you start the smaller it is the better so as soon as it sprouts um, I, I may, failed to finish my story about how to make the sprouts. After the third or fourth day, depending on how warm it is in your climate, the warmer it is, the less time it takes to sprout. Uh, you don't want to go too long because mold will start growing. So as soon as you feel like you've got enough sprouts, it's okay if there's a few that look like they haven't sprouted yet. Because what you do is you pour them in water, clean water, and then you the seeds float to the top, according to a video I saw, and then you scoop the seeds off and throw those away, and then you just take the sprouts lay them on a paper towel and let them dry for an hour or so and then you put them in your um, your Ziploc bags and store them either long term in the freezer or short term if you're going to use them in the next few days you could put them in the refrigerator so what I'll probably be doing is storing half in the freezer and then half in the refrigerator so that they're there fresh for me to use and then by the time I run out of those when I go into the freezer um, the secret is that when you take them out of the freezer, you quickly put it in your smoothie and grind it up and drink it. Um, if you let it sit there, I don't know, it, it, somehow the juices mess it up and it's not as potent. I don't know. I just remember not to do that. The, the, the experts say to take the frozen ones and put it directly into your smoothie and grind it up and then drink it. I wouldn't want to eat thawed pre-frozen broccoli sprouts in my salad. That doesn't sound very appetizing. So, because you know when you freeze stuff, the, the water component crystallizes and sort of not very good. Um, well, uh, let's see if I've missed anything on this page. It leaches into the cooking water. The glucoaphanin does, and so you just be aware of that. If you boil your broccoli, it's going to go into the soup broth, and don't throw the water away because that's where all the good stuff is. Now, let's see here, um, Brussels sprouts, Savoy cabbage, and red cabbage all have high amounts. A uh, half cup of each gives about 30 to 45 grams of the sulforaphane once you chew it up and masticate it in your mouth. And a good way to have raw cabbage is to put it in a coleslaw. So I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to have Savoy cabbage and red cabbage. I'll have to look into that and see how to make a good coleslaw. And then the Brussels sprouts, I doubt anyone's going to eat that raw, but if you do cook that, um, cook it in butter and garlic, it's pretty good actually, if you cut them in half, saute them in butter and garlic, and then add your mustard powder, and uh, that should make it active. Alright, now, 200 grams of broccoli sprouts is like an optimum dose for something. That was cited in one of these discussions. So just keep that in mind. That's about probably a cup and a half. That's probably about one or two cups. So, 
you're not going to want to eat a quart of broccoli sprouts. <laughs> I think one cup is going to be plenty. If not, I'm probably just going to have a fourth a cup a day. A fourth a cup per day. So, um, there's this aging disease called perjoria, which is caused by high levels of this aging protein called perjorin or perjorin. And um, it's very NRF2 pathway related. You see, the perjorin protein, which you have too much of when you have the disease, blocks the NRF2 pathway. So it makes you age quickly. So this is just to point out that um, the sulforaphan is very anti-aging. Um, since the sulforaphan activates the NRF2 pathway, they found that sulforaphan actually helps this disease a lot. And I don't know, I can't quantify that. I have to actually read the papers. Um, daikon sprouts have high morosinate activity, so instead of mustard seed, you could use raw daikon sprouts and add that to your cooked broccoli. And uh, let me just say that um, Dr. Rhonda Patrick has a little video where she mentions how to get the most bang out of your buck in terms of getting the most sulforaphane out of the broccoli sprouts. She makes her own sprouts, and in the video she pours um, 60 degrees Celsius water over her cup of sprouts and waits 10 minutes. And what that does is it helps um, the sulforaphane be maximized because there's apparently the glucoraphidin has two pathways. If it reacts with morosinase, it goes to sulforaphane, but it can also react with this other uh, enzyme that's there and react to something that's not active. And so if you want to maximize the pathway to the active sulforaphane, what you have to do is you have to get rid of that other enzyme so that it won't go on this pathway. And luckily that other enzyme, which I can't remember what it's called, I didn't write it down, uh, that other enzyme is destroyed with heat before morosinase is destroyed by heat. So if you pour this 60 degrees water over, no sorry, 70 degrees, 60 degrees over broccoli florets that are raw and because they because a little more sensitive in the broccoli florets, you know, like broccoli, the plant, the little flowers on top, little green buds. But if you have sprouts, it's a little bit more robust and so you can pour 70 degrees C water over that and for both cases, about 10 minutes, wait about 10 minutes and then of course the hot water starts to cool down anyway. Then pour that water off and now you have highly active sulforaphane filled sprouts or broccoli. And I'm going to show a little graph here. Okay, so this curve right here, let's see if I can see this. The number one curve is the bad uh, pathway. And you can see that for this for the sprouts at 70 degrees, it's, it's basically knocked out. You've gotten rid of that pathway. I mean, you've gotten rid of that uh, enzyme so that the bad stuff, it's not really bad, it's just not active isn't formed anymore. And what is formed, because the morosinate is more prominent, then you're making your um, sulforaphane. And, and that's maxed out at about 70 degrees at a 10 minute period. So she did the testing and she found out 70 degrees. So what you do is you just take your, um, I don't know about you, but I have a little electric coffee pot that plugs into the wall. You just keep it filled with water. It's glass, very pretty. Fill it with water, put your temperature um, gauge in there and you as it heats up you measure it. You can do it with a pan too. But anyway, um, when it gets to 60 degrees quickly take it off or turn it off. Pour that 60 degrees C water over your sprouts. Wait 10 minutes. Ching! You're all done. So then you can take your sprouts and just eat them. Put them in a uh, smoothie. Um, I have visions of mixing it with my salad dressing. Don't need mustard seed because it's already raw or it's raw enough to have the morosinase in it. And then taking that salad dressing mixed with the sprouts, kind of like as a paste, and then adding avocado, or maybe a little goat cheese or whatever, and wrapping it in a, in a big leaf of lettuce, like a roll, and eating it. Nom, 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 nom. Oh, that sounds so good. Maybe you put a few cashews in there or sunflower seeds. I'm getting hungry thinking about it. I'm gonna note is, if you buy broccoli sprouts in the store, already made, They've probably been sitting on the shelf and they can grow really bad bacteria. So just be really careful. I, I would recommend against it. And unless you know the store and you know they just put them out that day and they were just made the day before, maybe then they'd be okay. That would be good. Like say if you're traveling and you go to like a Whole Foods and they have broccoli sprouts, you can ask when they were put out and maybe if they were fresh, you could eat those. So 
Um, I think that's about it. Um, I wanted to summarize by saying it's been shown that um, sulforaphane in broccoli sprouts and also all cruciferous vegetables helps autism and autistics and um, Asperger's feel better. And that the testing didn't say Asperger's, it just said autism, autistics in general. And the test was done on all men, but the test is now being repeated for a very much larger study, probably recruiting all ages and all sexes. And um, we will see uh, you know, how that fares out probably in a year or so. Um, and if you eat cooked uh, cruciferous vegetables, you would need to add something with the morosinase in it. And make sure if you use mustard powder, that it has a bite to it because if it doesn't have a bite to it, like a burny bite, um, that's telling you the morosinase is no longer there. For example, if you buy mustard seeds or mustard seed powder on Amazon and you get it and it doesn't have that bite, it's just been sitting on a shelf too long. So that won't really work. Um, but if you have the raw broccoli, the raw uh, uh, cauliflower, or whatever, um, that will be enough to just chew the food and that'll activate it. Um, if you can make your own sprouts, that would be really good. I just wanted to let you know this because it may be a really easy thing to do for a big bang for the buck, if you know what I mean. Um, also, uh, over-the-counter supplements, even if they do come out with one with sulforaphane and they somehow stabilize it, it'll probably be a dollar a day, you know, for your pill. But this is almost free. The broccoli seeds, you know, they go, you can get a big giant one pound bag for, I don't know, 10 bucks or something like that. And um, that would last for many months. And once you get your mason jars, those are practically free. I got mine at a thrift store for 50 cents, big giant one. I got two and I'm going to be rotating them, one and then the other. So. I hope this helped you. Peace, everybody. So, thanks, everybody, for letting me tell you about this. And look for that more detailed video in the future. Water from the gods cannot fulfill the root. Flower starts to fall. Hoping for a breath I'm hoping for salvation Back to the life I knew Imagination hidden meaning It happens to us all But then we have to lie And wonder why we fall Trying to end happens to the mind when a person gives away his freedom for a dream but it'll get you nowhere Chains and salt desire They only serve to fool you While they put out the fire There is no hidden meaning happens to us all The secret is to fight it And 
build a safer wall Still I have to be pretty Never say what you Listen to the 